Hello. Welcome to episode one of The Thief's Tale, season two of The Devil's Violin podcast. This time we will tell a longer story across five episodes. And please note, this story is very definitely for adults. The podcast is free, but if you wish to send us a donation so we can make more, you can do so at www.thedevilsviolin.co.uk slash donate. At our website, you can also buy a download of this podcast and of many of our previous shows. Our thanks go to the Arts Councils of Wales and England for their support with this project. Are you ready? Then let's begin. It was a wild night. The sky was black as grief. And the hailstones, it was as if an angry god was hurling them. Across the plain came three riders, burned by the cold, battered by the hail, soaked through, trailing clouds of breath mist. They were searching for shelter, but not even a stunted tree could they see. Then, a light. Then, a cottage. Who would choose to live in such a lonely place? They dismounted. They knocked. An old woman came to the door. The first rider, if we stay out here we'll be dead by the morning. The second, can we shelter till tomorrow? The third, we swear we'll be no trouble. She looked at them. They were no more than boys. Soft-skinned, shivering boys. She took them in. They peeled off their sodden cloaks and she saw they were brothers. An old man sat by the fire. What a sight he was. An ugly scar from the left side of his temple to the right side of his chin. His nose was broken. His teeth were jagged. His right leg was only bone. He stood up stiffly and gestured to the chair. One of the brothers sank into it. The old woman ladled out a broth from the pot over the fire. They cupped it in their shaking hands. The old man. Where are you from? Scotland. Where are you bound? The court of your king. What business do you have in that place? We're to steal his black white faced stallion. The old man looked at the old woman and said, Are you tired of living? We've got no choice, said the first. He murdered the Prince of Scotland. The only recompense our king will accept is your king's horse. Murdered, said the third. He was just a fella in a tavern. He pushed me, I pushed him back. He went over a bench, smacked his head. It could have happened to anyone. The old man, Do you know how to steal? Yeah said the first. You take something that isn't yours. Have you seen a castle before? said the old man. How will you get past the gates? The sentries? We'll think of something, 
said the second. We have to. If we go home empty-handed, our king will hang us all in a row. The third lad's head went down in shame. Do you know where the stallion is kept? Well, that would be in the stables, said the first. The old man looked at the old woman again. Later that night, in bed, the old woman said to her husband, Don't, he said, those three, they couldn't find their own backsides with a map. You promised? I did, but I won't have them on my conscience as well. Why can't you think of their mother? The old woman said, why can't you think of me? If you go, you'll be killed and I'll be left in this godforsaken place to die alone. When you look at them, said the old man, don't you see the sons we might have had? Of course I do. Our lives, said the old man, are nearly over. Theirs are just beginning. The rest of their night they lay awake, side by side, in silence. Next morning the storm had blown out. The woman was silent as she gave the brothers breakfast. One of them said, Where is your husband? She nodded at the window. The brothers saw him in the yard saddling a bony pony. They went to him. I will help you. The brothers looked at his wife and saw she was shaking from head to foot. The first brother, uh, thank you. The second, we're in enough trouble already without you round our necks. I was a thief, said the old man. I can get you in there. If you do what I say, I may even get you out. Look at yourself, said the youngest. Your thieving days are over. You could barely stand up straight. What I lost in strength, I gained in guile. Stay here, said the first. Feed your chickens. Do you know the way to the castle of the King of Ireland? The brothers. All right, then. You can show us the way. When they were ready, the old man leant over to kiss his wife. She turned away. They set off without a word. When they had ridden half a mile, the old man turned to wave. But she had gone back inside. After three days they came to a city on a hill. At the top of the hill was a castle. Once they were through the city gates, one of the brothers, thank you for your help, now you can go home. But the old man didn't. Instead he turned his horse down a narrow alley beside a river. I took a secret passage into the castle once. Maybe if we're lucky it will still be there. So they followed him to a mill. He dismounted. One of the brothers said, is the passage through the mill? Passage, said the old man. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. Fergus, when the miller saw the old man, Colonel, Colonel Crovey, come in. He fed them with bread and beer. Then the miller said, how is your Mary? Oh, she's less than best pleased with me, said Colonel. But she is well in herself. How is your boy? Oh, he's no longer a boy now, said the miller. He's grown to a man, thanks to you. He has children of his own. 
These lads, said the old man, they've got themselves into a tight scrape. They need the king's black white faced stallion. The miller shook his head. That horse, he wouldn't part with it for love or pity. If they don't get the horse, said the old man, they'll hang. If they try to take it, said the miller, they'll boil in oil. Do you still supply flour to the king's kitchen? I do. Well, then, said the old man. Next day the miller went up the hill in his wagon, through the castle gates, past the guards, into the courtyard, and then he put four sacks against the wall between the kitchen and the stables. When evening came, and the courtyard was full of the smells and sounds of a feast, the old man cut himself out of the sack. Then he freed the brothers from the other sacks. He led them to the stables. Leave this to me. Don't touch anything inside there. You understand? They crept in. Tethered to the wall in a stall was the black white-faced stallion. The third lad, the one who had killed the son of the King of Scotland, he wanted to make up for the trouble he'd caused, so he grabbed the reins. But they were strung with bells. The bells rang, the stallion screamed, the stable boy slumbering in the shadows woke and blew his horn. Soldiers came running, grabbed the thieves, beat them and threw them in a dungeon. Next day guards dragged them to the feasting hall. The young king ordered a cauldron filled with oil be put on the fire. We hope you enjoyed episode one. Episode two will follow next Sunday. The Devil's Violin are Daniel Morden, storyteller, Sarah Moody on cello, Oliver Wilson Dixon on violin, and Oliver also mixed and produced the podcast. When circumstances allow, The Devil's Violin will be back on tour with a new show called The Beast in Me. To be sure to hear the next episode of The Thief's Tale and to get info on where and when we are playing, please hit the subscribe button. And don't forget, you can donate at www.thedevilsviolin.co.uk slash donate. Thank you very much for listening. See you next Sunday. <laughs>